Hello, it's a beautiful, gorgeous, sunny afternoon here. I'm in my lunch break, sitting down to record Saturday's Table Talk for you. And uh, life is feeling good. I am a couple of days away from being on holiday again for another couple of weeks. So, uh, all good. Got some things to talk about though, so let's get to it. stuff and welcome to Table Talk. My name is Jason and if this is your first time catching a Table Talk, uh, a big welcome. If you're a new subscriber, a massive welcome to you as well. And if you're a long-term subscriber, a big hello, welcome back. Nice to see you. So, um, yeah, um, my subscribers have started creeping up again um, over the last couple of weeks. It's a bit of a, a funny thing. In the summer, it quietens down quite a bit. Um, and you sort of drop below your, your normal level, but it's crept back up. So I don't know whether that's some of the kits that we've reviewed. Um, the Bulldog has certainly dr uh, drawn some people in. Um, so I don't know. There's always, there's always a mix of people that come to the channel for various reasons. First impressions videos that I do is one of the the bigger draws um, into the channel. But I am wondering if the little section that I put at the start of my videos is now attracting more subscribers and, and helping people to say, oh, actually it does more than just this. Let's That, that might be interesting. Uh, let's go and investigate. Don't know, um, it's, it's difficult to know. Um, what I do know is that um, around about 60% of people that don't watch the, um, that watch the videos, or it, that also depends, but six, between 60 and 75% of people that watch the videos are not subscribers. So if you're not a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button. There's always lots going on on the channel. Uh, and we cover a variety of things. We don't focus on the same thing all the time. We're always doing something a little bit uh, different and that's very deliberate on, on my part. So, as you can see, we've got quite a bit to talk about today, uh, one way or another. What we do in Table Talk is we talk about what's going on behind the scenes, behind the videos, um, so you get an understanding of what the plans are, what's affecting things and, and so on and so forth. And those of you that have been a long-term subscriber, um, then you, you, know, you know quite a bit about me, the family, my garden and all sorts of bits and pieces that we can throw into here from time to time. So, right, let's crack on, shall we? Let's start with what happened uh, uh, the week just gone. Uh, so Monday, uh, we had a review of um, another airbrush. So uh, this one here, um, I'm going to be doing a video, um, a couple of videos um, soon on uh, making modifications and also um, one on air caps and uh, they, 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 they're sort of linked so I don't know yet whether I'm going to do it as one video or two different videos. In my mind it's two different videos but it may end up being one. Um, but yeah we did that, it's a really nice brush. Um, I'm getting on with it quite well. Um, I still prefer my Mobius, in, in fairness, um, for a, a 0.3. I've got a 0.5 needle in this. And I don't know why, but I sort of still prefer um, the uh, what I call the entry-level brush um, as well from them. But I have been using this and been having a play with it as part of understanding it, and it is a, a nice brush. So I will leave a link below for gallery. Um, and I think this is a, an important uh, part in that road with gallery to, to just talk about um, promoting people's products. So I'm not really promoting gallery particularly, um, but I do want to set you a little bit of, of context. They send me these for free. Yeah, 
Um, so I'm not paid for any of the brushes that I have um, uh, reviewed for gallery. But that is what I've done. The agreement I have with them is that I'm fair um, and honest um, and uh, unbiased and I can say what I like. Uh, they actually want my feedback on the brushes as well. So they're always looking to continuously improve. So the, the deal is they send me this, I review it, I tell you what I think, tell them what I think. I have given them some feedback on a couple of improvement points which they appear to have taken on board for future releases. Um, and you know what, um, I, I have that link that gets you through to the gallery webpage, which is still the cheapest place to buy them. Don't go buying them on Amazon or something like that, because there's a third party adding, adding cost on there. Um, uh, and it keeps you up to date on the special offers as well. And then you've got my 10% discount. So they offer the 10% discount because they know I'm reviewing it. They're confident in their product that it's a good quality product and that the review is likely to be favorable and therefore some people will be interested. And roughly um, uh, about 15%, uh, between 15 and 18% of people that go to the website through my link then end up making a purchase. So that works for, for, for them and it's also working for me. But here's a bit of context for you. I have been approached by another um, airbrush company, um, uh, also a Chinese company, and they have um, asked me um, to review uh, their product. Um, I had a look at their website, I had a look at their product, and I decided that it was um, not a, the sort of quality product that I would like to advocate. So you have to be very careful. Um, there are companies out there that make these things really, really cheaply and you get stuff that doesn't last very long and they're sort of making a quick book and they work on the basis that there's always somebody else to sell to. Uh, that, that doesn't appear to be what gallery are in it for gallery in it, in it for giving people quality products so that the customer comes back again and again and again and they're building brand through reputation. So that's a completely different thing than knocking out units based on the fact there's always someone else to buy. Um, and you can tell because not only do the products look cheap but the, uh, and they are cheap to buy but they're chucking all sorts of stuff in so you've got hoses and all sorts of stuff and I just looked at it and thought, you know what, I've bought one of these sort of things before, not that company, um, and it's cheap, and you know what, I'm not going to end up saying anything particularly positive about it, so I'm just not going to do it. So um, um, they've approached me, I, I haven't done anything about it, I'm not going to. Um, the gallery airbrushes though, they are all quality products. Now, you can absolutely argue that it's not quite the same quality as these, but from a, a hobbyist point of view, there ain't much difference. That does everything you need. That does everything you need. That costs less than that. Why would you? I fell into the trap of thinking spending the most money on the airbrush that you can afford is the best way to go. And it's not actually the case. So, uh, yeah, I've been really happy with the gallery product. So that was a nice review on Monday. Um, if you're new to the, uh, to the channel, you'll know that I, you won't know that I go off on a bit of a tangent, but that's what we do. Um, so, yeah, uh, a nice little review, nice airbrush. I've got more to come uh, on uh, airbrushing in the future. Now then, um, on Wednesday, oh, yeah, we had the uh, Matchbox um, Valiant Black Shadow. What a lovely, lovely kit that was. I thought that it was a lovely kit. I've been looking for a motorcycle kit for a while. Um, that one really spoke to me, especially in the red. There are some changes. Whether I can make those changes, I don't know until we do the build. Uh, and in my mind, I'd like to build that kit this year. But with my pipe, having looked at my pipeline, which is... Um, now uh, the Sean Horse and the Tempo, and then after the Tempo, the big Space 1999 Eagle kit. Um, was that too many nines? I'm not sure. Um, I, I might not get that done by the end of the year. 
don't know. Um, so, you know, plus um, we've got something else which we're going to talk about in a minute that's going to um, feed into what comes next because I've got, got some thoughts, going to share them with you today. Um, so uh, you guys are my sort of special people. You're the, sub you're the subscribers that actually are interested in the channel uh, more holistically than just looking out for uh, builds or video individual videos that might interest you so there's there's people subscribe for all sorts of reasons you know they're looking out for anything to do with model ships or looking to do with anything to do with tool reviews you know there's, there's people that subscribe for for different reasons but those of you that watch table talk and there's many of you now that each week are saying you know this is my regular especially when i haven't put one out for a week and they go, oh, well, I really look forward to Saturday. It's how I start my Saturday. I have my, my breakfast with Table Talk, which is lovely. Really, really nice. Um, but, and people clearly seem to miss it. But you guys are the people that are sort of the invested in the channel, like what we're doing. See it for, for, for what it is. Uh, I, I, tr I try and do it in a sort of a magazine format. So yes, we've got a build, but we've also got a product review or a tool review or some... Um, deep dive into airbrushes like we've been doing whatever it is the sort of articles that you would come across in a magazine um, sort of I, I purposely try and do it that way um, it's why I have more than one build on a go at a time it's why we have a major build and then we do smaller things so we're, we're changing things at a bit of a pace um, but unlike a magazine I can get you guys involved and we're going to talk about that uh, like I said, a, a little later on. So um, then we had the next part of the Scharnhorst. Uh, good to see her back. Um, and uh, we're back to Scharnhorst every other week, fingers crossed. Um, there's a small risk because it's been so hot uh, recently. I haven't managed to get stuff done on the Scharnhorst because there's a lot of painting and I simply can't paint at the moment. Um, so the weekend that's just gone, I was planning to ha do it as a Sean Horse week, um, having done Tempo the week before, and I couldn't do anything on her. So I ended up finishing the lifeboat. We'll have a talk about that in a sec as well. Um, so, yeah, um, there's a small risk that I might not have enough material for every other week of the Sean Horse for, um, for the next one. So we might do back-to-back um, -back lifeboat. So shall we talk about lifeboat now we're here? So the lifeboat, as you can see, is done. And I did put a little short up saying not quite finished. Um, and then later that evening, I stayed up late to finish it actually, uh, we put um, a wash on in a couple of places, just very, very minor uh, wash in a couple of places. And then we painted in my... Um, railings which I have modified from the original kit so as you can see um, let me bring you this picture back up because um, where's my keyboard there we go uh, you can see it better on there I'm knocking everything over now uh, what we've done is we've modified the kit a little bit because it's a starter set um, and just messed around a little bit we've not gone as far as we could one of the big things I'll say, and you can see it quite clearly there, is the glass, uh, the glazing is quite poor fitting. So <clears throat> replacing that with acetate would be desirable. Um, I didn't think about it until after the fact, really. Um, but what we've done is we've um, we've done the base differently. The, the instructions have you painted blue out of the, the paints included in the kit but I've chosen to do it as more of an industrial stillage and that's given me an opportunity to do some weathering because these things are really, really well maintained. So there's no opportunities for weathering on the actual lifeboat itself. So the lifeboat is pristine, which is why there's only a little bit of wash on it to highlight things like the little uh, grill there and stuff. Um, we've changed some colors to be a bit more accurate to the real thing. Um, Airfix have done a good job um, there's a couple of challenges in places which makes it a little challenging as, a, as a, a starter set but when I go back to being a kid and when I was first starting out on building models I didn't do a good job of them you know I didn't 
didn't fit things in properly and they got glue everywhere and and stuff so you know what from a point of view of sheer fun this is a great little kit and yes it is a starter set um it, it's borderline so it's, it's at the top end of difficulty for a starter set uh, not least because of the decals the decals that go down the hull there the big stripes and big long they're difficult to do for anybody um, let alone someone who's never done a decal before so it does have it it, it does have, have its challenges and I made a mistake on one of the decals a couple of decals are oversized um, as you'll see when we go through the build the builds are gonna be two parts um, so uh, we'll talk about that in a moment um, and some of the colors are slightly wrong so the, the pale gray deck is inaccurate um, so I've gone with this darker colour. Interestingly, this darker colour seems to be a better match for watch on the lifeboats, and that's a Humbrol enamel colour. So Humbrol could have gone with that colour in the first place. Um, so because the the twenty seven is just a, a little bit too light, I think. Um, and then um, I've changed the stanchion colours uh, to aluminium rather than the pale grey in the instructions, which is is also incorrect. It's like a brushed stainless steel. Um, so it's like a, a matte metallic colour, so that I've gone with aluminium and, and that's worked well. Um, so um, yeah, and uh, FX have also made a mistake on the, on the bumpers and not done them quite correctly. It's very minor, but then they exacerbate it by incorrectly telling you how to paint the deck, um, assuming that the gaps between these uh, uh, rubber bumpers are actually the deck when they're not they're actually part of the rubber bumper so there's some bits and pieces we talk about all of it um, in the in the two builds what I have done with this though is extensively use the AK markers that we reviewed a couple of weeks ago and um, where we've got to is they really sped up this build they were really convenient and pretty much all the aluminium and black you can see on the deck up is been done by the marker pens so there were, uh, as I as I said when I reviewed the pens they appeared to be great for medium-sized parts and I've proven that to me the white on the on the mast had to be painted in because the nibs on the pens are too thick to get in and the white's very opaque and, and rubbish and needs dozens of layers to, to make it decent so we painted that with um, off-white I think it was from ICM but the um, I mean the orange and the blue and the black on the hull is all Humbrol colours. But then um, the orange life rings is a mark pen. Um, so yeah, and I even did like the green screens and things on the inside um, in in mark pen. Uh, so yeah, it all turned out quite well, and the mark pens sped things up a little bit. So yeah, we've done a, a couple of little alterations to it, but mainly built it straight out of the box, used the Humbrol colours uh, in places, and then went outside of that in others. So I've not built it like a starter kit at all. I've not gone right, I'm limiting myself to what's in the box and just using basic skills. I've just built it for fun, the way I wanted to build it. And if I was to build it again, I'd absolutely change the glazing for acetate um, and have a, a look a bit more at the fit of the cabin onto the deck which doesn't fit well at all which is a which is a shame um, yeah the way they've gone about it um, does make it a little bit tricky um, but yeah uh, you know what uh, youngsters building that their imagination goes past the gaps they don't see the gaps um, they, they see the, the, the bigger thing so the finished model so yeah, there we go. It is finished. It's two builds and they'll be coming along. You'll see the first one next week. And then following that, we'll have Scharnhorst again. And then we should have the second one. So over the next four weeks, you'll see the, the two parts that complete this build. Unless I don't have enough Scharnhorst material, in which case I'll do the two back to back, as I've said. So that's where we are with the lifeboat. Great little kit. If you, if you'll, uh, two weekends. Two weekends, three at an absolute push if you do some modifications like I've done. It's taken me two and a half, but not working both days. So, um, so yeah, two two weekends to do that, I think. Uh, one, one to clean up all the parts and assemble it, uh, and then um, one to do the, the 
painting and, and final fit. So yeah, all good. Um, so what is coming up next week? Let's take a look at that. Well, on Monday, we have the final part of the airbrushing for complete beginners series. And I ummed and ahed about this last episode um, because it's not really for complete beginners. But what I wanted to do was take you through that whole process, which we've done. We've taken you from, I don't know anything about airbrushes, and but I know I'd like to buy one, all the way through to how to use one, how to clean one, strip one, understand one, uh, and start improving your skills. What I wanted to do in the last one was go, now think beyond just laying paint. What else can you do with your airbrush? Um, so we did a little simple thing on laying down uh, dust. Um, just to give you an idea of, you know, you thin your paint and mess around with your paint or put an ink in or something like that. You can do different things with your airbrush and really sort of expand your horizons. So I wanted to leave you as to going, yep, yeah, actually I can put paint down on an airbrush. And once something goes wrong, I understand it. And I know how to strip it and clean it. I feel confident. What's my next step? So I sort of move you over that line a little bit in the last one. Um, it's quite a short video actually. There's not a lot to be said. We deal with clear coating as well. There's not a lot to be said about that. Um, so, you know, if you can put paint down, you can put clear coat down fundamentally. So that's how we start off the week. Um, on the Wednesday, we have a first impressions of a Tamiya kit. Um, I, um, this is a kit I've recently bought and originally bought it in a slightly different format. When it first came out, it's, it's getting a bit long in the tooth now and it was absolutely cutting edge when it came out. It, it was marvellous and, and lots of people were building it and getting excited about it. It was in several magazines as full builds and um, and they released one of their um, Tamiya uh, how to build guides on it because it was that that big a deal. Um, and it, it, it's a lovely, lovely kit. So um, first impressions on Wednesday is something to look forward to um, because it's a it's a kit that lots of people know, but not also at the same time because of the variant, not a lot of people have seen. It all makes sense to me anyway. We've already mentioned that the lifeboat uh, first episode comes up with that. And I think the first episode pretty much gets you up to the point where we're, we're painting, I think, as memory serves. Um, I, I've edited and, and uploaded that one already. Um, I haven't edited this one. Um, but I'm determined that it'll just be one more video. I don't want to get it into another one. I've already got some material on the tempo. This weekend, uh, we're focused on the tempo, but uh, how, how are you work for those of you that don't know, and I know most of you do, um, we start off the weekend by swip, uh, flipping project. It's how I keep my mojo going, and it works because in the last three years of the nearly four years of this channel, I have not created any more shelf queens. Um, so I have two shelf queens, basically two builds are started at, right in the first year of the channel that I haven't finished. And ever since then, every single project we've started a build on, I have finished. And I commit myself to finishing those builds. Now the two that I didn't finish, one of them had already started before the channel, and I quickly realized, actually I need to take people from the start of it. So it was the 1200 Arizona. There are still those videos out there, and we will come back to it at some point one day, but it's a shelf queen. And the other one is War Spite. I've taken those videos off because I keep getting hassle about them. Um, I, I've, I've damaged a part. The, the price of replacing the part is greater than the price of buying the whole kit. Um, and I don't want to do either of those. Um, and so I, I, I'm sort of, even though it's got Pontos set and everything, I'm sort of, because that part's missing, I can't, I can't complete the build. Um, so I've taken it down for now. Whether in, in the future I'll, I'll um, find a solution, I don't know. So, uh, one kind subscriber once offered to 3D print it for me, but I was unable to find the information to be able to, 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 get, that, to get that done. Um, so yeah, don't know. Um, I would like to come back to it because as, as the build the build's safely boxed in the attic, um, 
the build was going really well and a lot of people were interested in it um, and it makes me feel I need to do another 350 ship build because the uh, um, the Japanese ship we did, um, Magasa, uh, I forget the name of it, uh, with the flight deck and everything on, that was a really popular build as well. So we do need to do another 1350 ship build at some point. Obviously not this year, it'll be next year. Um, and it depends on how we get on with Sean Horse because I'm a bit unwilling to have two ship builds on the go at the same time. However, I might not have a say in it. We'll talk about that in a so, minute. So uh, as I look ahead, uh, and I've, I've got, a, uh, like I told you last week, I've now got a fairly rigid-ish plan for the rest of the year. Things are looking good to complete the year in the, in the current way. So um, the next two weeks I am on holiday so I had a little bit of a break in the recording there, so I can't quite remember exactly what we're talking about, but I think it was my pending holidays. The The important point of the holidays is we're not actually going away anywhere. So we're going to be doing different things, different days, day trips, trips out, you know, depends on the weather and all sorts of stuff. Um, you know, there's a film that we all want to go and see at the, pin at the pictures and uh, all of that sort of stuff. And, go out for tea once or twice, go out for lunch. And also it will be my birthday. Um, I will be 54 uh, on the 26th of August. So I always like to take my holiday off. I don't want to be working on, on my birthday. So over those two weeks, we'll be doing all sorts of things. But importantly, in the mornings, I'll be getting finding some time for some modeling every day, which is so unusual for me. I managed to get um, modelling time Saturday morning, Sunday morning, one evening a week and very occasionally I might squeeze in an extra hour or two, possibly, but not very often. So, you know, my, my modelling time is a little, a little limited, so when I get a holiday like this it's nice to be able to do a little bit more, because this is how I relax do, doing my modelling. Even with a channel that I'm trying to feed, it's still, still relaxing. Um, so I've got that coming along, so I'm hoping that we'll really uh, motor along with the with the tempo um, and the uh, the larger diorama around that, um, and get well ahead of the build videos in terms of content um, for both the tempo and the Sean Horst. So we'll do a week on tempo and then a week on Sean Horst. Um, so um, as I was saying before start off the weekend on one and then I work through it through the week. So just those two builds, now the lifeboat is finished and the bulldog's out of the way, I'm back down to just the two builds plus the Endeavour build, um, which I want to get a bit more ahead on because I think, because uh, I paused the build a little bit while I was focusing on these, um, I think when the next video goes out, that's, that's it, I've got no more material for the next one. So could do with filming at least a couple of those as well so we should have time to do all of that so that's sort of what's coming up over the next couple of weeks on the bench this week is uh, uh, this weekend is tempo weekend and then we'll go all weekend all week on tempo and see what we can get done we should have at least I think I've got the first videos footage done already so we should uh, get at least another two videos um, in the bag, I would think, over that week. And then we'll flip to Sean Horst and try and get another two or three videos of Sean Horst so that I'm ahead. And then after the holidays, then um, everything I do is just keeping me that two or three weeks in front, which will be a nice, nice place to be. Um, I, obviously, you lose ground, at you know, Christmas will come along Telford, I won't be doing any modelling, so there's little things that will have an impact, but yeah. Right then, you've been sitting looking at these long enough, so let's talk about these. These are not stash ads, um, as much as I'd like uh, some of them to be. Um, this is half of the kits that have been um, lent to me um, to do first impressions. So, a uh, chap called Dom, Dominic, who is a long-time subscriber of the channel, friend of the channel, um, offered me the opportunity to review 
Um, some of his kits, which are a bit different than the stuff that I tend to review, some different brands and some different scales. Um, and he, he basically said, would you be interested in, in reviewing any of these? And I said, no, I'd be interested in reviewing all of them. And before I know it, they're all in the post, which is amazing. So these four, so Dom, I know you're watching. So just for your information, these four out of the eight kits that you shipped to me, these are the four that I have already filmed the first impressions. I've got the other half to do. I might ship them back to you in, in two parcels rather than in, in the big parcel. Don't know yet. But um, yeah, so massive thank you to you for sending me these kits because some of these brands I have never come across before and it's been really interesting to have a little dabble with them. So. Just to uh, run everyone through these, you're going to see all of these as first impressions. Uh, unfortunately, I don't get to keep them. So, uh, Dora Wings, we know Dora Wings, we've reviewed a couple of their kits. Um, so, um, this is an MB151C1, never heard of that before, um, in 172 scale, um, and it's Foreign surface, uh, service, so uh, Luftwaffe and Greece. I think it's an Italian aircraft, I think. Um, sort of looks Italian to me, don't know. Um, but yeah, so we've reviewed that. I'm not going to tell you what I think of the kit. You'll have to wait for the, the, the video. So that's the first one we've done. Um, then Special Hobby, I have reviewed one of their kits before, um, but it's a much older one and it had... Um, uh, vac form canopy which had gone really really yellow and I couldn't reverse it. Uh, pleased to say this doesn't have a vac form can canopy. Um, it's got all sorts of goodies in here. Um, Westland World Wing, quite an unusual looking uh, kit. Let's get some light on that for you. Uh, unlocking air uh, unusual looking aircraft I should say. Uh, again 172 scale. Um, so I have filmed that one. Um, and then AZ models, I'm aware of them, but I don't think I've ever had one of their kits. So that was really interesting going through that. That is an Italian aircraft and um, yeah, it was quite interesting going through that. Um, and then finally, a brand I'd never heard of and an aircraft I'd never heard of. And it turns out this is a late war. Uh, late 44 uh, this came into service um, and it's um, a heavy fighter um, and I'd never heard of the aircraft I've never heard of the company called Sword they're called Sword uh, they name themselves after the uh, D-Day landing beach code name um, and they're a Czech company and um, yeah I, I went through uh, filmed that just yesterday actually so um, really really interesting uh, to have a play with some brands I've not not played with before. Um, I would say pretty much all of these uh, are that they're all different sizes of cottage industry manufacturers. So it's really interesting to see the similarities and the differences in in what these these guys were doing. But um, yeah, very interesting. Don, once again, thank you so much um, because this has put me over the threshold for first impressions for this year and got me started on next year so yeah brilliant thank you very much really enjoyed doing that it's, it's brought me great pleasure um, and um, next week I will show you the other four um, and hopefully we'll get them first impression during the course of next week as well and then I can get them all, all back to you mate so that sort of leads me on to another subject. We've still got a couple of big topics to talk about. Um, and the next subject really is about uh, donations and supporting the channel. Um, so this is the slot where um, I usually say um, there's a lot of special people in, in, in the hobby, a lot of kind people. Um, and uh, we mentioned the people that have donated in the, in the last week. In this case, it'd be the last three weeks or so because I haven't really uh, caught up with it. Uh, we'll do that in a minute. Um, so if you do make a donation to the channel, I will give you a shout out live on, on the Table Talk. Um, but I just wanted to talk about it a little bit because I think 
um, a, a couple of people um, just talking to them. This isn't through the chat, this is uh, talking through email. Uh, a couple of people have sort of not quite got the right impression of, of, of what's going on here. Um, I make videos for anybody to watch for free. I enjoy doing it. I enjoy doing the videos as much as I enjoy building the kits. Um, and I enjoy it because of the interaction I get with you guys. Modeling is a, or can be a very solitary hobby. So when you've got someone you can share it with, or many people you can share it with, and um, there's feedback coming back and so on and so forth. Um, then you know that that brings um, some some great pleasure uh, for me. So it always was quite a solitary hobby, and my only communication with the outside world was reading a magazine. So it, it's great that I can actually talk on a Friday live with people, um, and it, it's great that people can leave messages, send emails, and 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 so on, uh, leave comments, and I can interact with people. I really enjoy it. Um, but the, the channel, um, um, a couple of years ago now went self-funding and what that means is I don't put any of my money into the channel. Um, that doesn't mean that I don't spend money on model kits for myself, although largely I don't, but if something comes along and you know, I've got to have it, um, and it's a, a build for me, um, then I'm going to go and buy it. Plus I also get model kits. Uh, birthdays and Christmases and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, there there is things that gets reviewed on the channel that are mine, but there's also other stuff that's sort of owned by the channel. And I make the distinction um, because the channel has its own budget, um, which is made up of the income from the channel. And everything that we review on the channel um, has been paid for by the channel. So um, I purchase other things for use on the channel like the chair and the, the camera. That doesn't come from subscriber money. The computer didn't come from subscriber money but I do all my video editing on it. Um, so it, it works for the channel but I've purchased those if that makes sense. So we don't sort of upgrade the channel uh, through subscriber money because there isn't enough of it. it, it it's just enough to get the kits ticking over. But you know, this isn't a case of me just sitting down and doing my hobby and filming it and you guys get to watch it for free. Um, I wouldn't ordinarily buy 53 model, or 52 I should say, model kits in a year um, for my stash. That's the number I need to buy to do first impressions every week. Yeah, so um, it's really important the little donations that I get. So I get a small income and it is a really small, it's fraction fraction of a pence for several hundred people watching a, um, a, a video. If uh, I, Typically, if, if it gets a thousand views in the first fortnight, I'll get three, under just under four pounds maybe in, in revenue. Uh, and then it'll it'll teeter off. Now there's other videos that are generating views. All the videos that I've done in the past are generating views, and that generates a little bit of money, and that ends up with a little pot of money. And in the summer, because there's less people watching, there's less people on YouTube in this hobby because they're out doing things with the family and summer holidays and stuff. Then that revenue goes down a little bit and then in the winter the revenue goes up a little bit. So there you go, it's seasonal, would you believe it? Uh, not massively, it's not like it drops off a cliff or anything, but it shrinks, um, the, the, the income contracts and it goes out. So those people that donate are really important to the channel. They keep the cameras rolling. It's that that de decides what I can afford to spend on kits and products. Uh, and what we get in here. So one or two people have commented that I seem to review a lot of Airfix kits. Well, the value for money. So it's all about budget. So someone very, very kindly um, um, did a very large super thanks. The largest super thanks I've ever seen, let alone got. Really, really large super thanks. And I know that that person intended for me to get the money, but actually, I'm only going to get 60% of it and it's a real shame. Um, that's why 
I offer PayPal um, so that you can put direct into PayPal. Um, and although that goes into my account, uh, my personal account, I have a little spreadsheet, a little budget on here um, and it gets logged in the budget. And that's what also what I use to do the thanks. So if you do super thanks or super chat, um, and not many people do, to, to be honest. I'll get around about 60% of that and YouTube gets 40%. Um, if you click the like button or make a comment, then uh, that helps the algorithm and one or two people more may see the video. And if more people see the video, then I get a slightly bigger uh, revenue from the adverts that are on there. Um, and if you pay, um, uh, give a donation by my PayPal, then I get 100% of that. So the channel uh, gets 100% of that. And it is the best way to, um, to support the channel. Now I also have merchandise. Um, at some point in the future, I'm gonna review um, what we've got in there and probably come up with uh, a new design and, and refresh it. But at the moment you can get a table talk fo focused design on things like t-shirts, cups, working aprons, um, I think there's tote bags and, and all sorts of stuff. Um, and then there, there's um, like the classic model uh, kit stuff logo. And there's also the um, uh, Gota build uh, design as well. Um, and you can get those on um, sort of ordinary cups in black or white or um, enameled metal cups, which are great for modeling because you drop them on the floor, they don't smash. So you've, you're, your precious cup's good. Um, and they hold a lot more so you can get a bigger brew on your desk. So you don't have to go and make a brew quite so often. So yeah, I, I, I really quite like those ones. But again, I actually get a tiny fraction of the money for that. So, you know, it's a company that makes these things. You give them a logo, they print it on as and when there's an order. So it doesn't cost them anything because they're already probably buying in the t-shirts and, and, and bags and aprons and things and their process is to just print it on. And uh, it's the same company, they're in Germany, it's the same company that um, does it for lots and lots of channels. So I get a, a tiny, tiny proportion of that um, and I now get a, a small revenue from the sale of airbrushes at Gallery as well. Um, I got my first payment in um, in June, uh, end of June for that. Um, so every time someone purchases something through my link in, in gallery, I get a small percentage um, uh, as well. So all these little things, they build up, they help. Um, but, you know, we can't afford to go out and buy £300 kits for review every month. So um, it's all... It's all sort of relative. So I just wanted to be clear because uh, there were some people saying, well, you know, those people that are donating are basically funding your hobby. You're not funding my hobby, you're funding the channel. Uh, my hobby is building the stuff. And yes, the channel might have, have um, paid for the kits and then I'm building it. But um, I, my stash at the moment, two thirds of my stash is stuff that I actually bought um, before the channel was running or the first couple of years of the channel when it wasn't self-funding and the income was not sufficient to be able to buy stuff um, on a, an every month basis. And it's not really now. What I do is I, I buy a couple of things off eBay, try and get them cheap, try and find bargains, get a couple of Airfix kits which are value for money uh, and, um, and spread it out and then over three months or so I might have saved a little bit to be able to get a bigger kit. So that's sort of how, how it works. So I just wanted to be clear because some people um, thought that um, in some way uh, the donations would, were going to me. They're not. They're going to the channel. Um, so just to be clear. Right. With that in mind, there are some lovely people that um, um, support the channel and want to keep the channel rolling. Uh, and I'm greatly appreciative of all of you. So, so uh, let's see, special people. Uh, first of all, Paul of uh, Plastic Monkey fame. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for your weekly donations. So I'm grouping a few here, uh, donations here together. Thank you so, so much. It is greatly appreciated, as you know. And if you've not checked Paul's channel out, you really, really should. Um, and then we've got uh, Charles Parker, 
Thank you very much, sir. Um, for, again, um, a, a really appreciated uh, donation. Um, it, it, it really does uh, make a difference to what we do. Um, and then we've got uh, James Carnahan. Uh, James, uh, once again, a big thank you for your donation. Um, you know I appreciate it and it, and, uh, it really does help. Um, then I've got now... I'm f I know there's been donation from this gentleman before and I'm not sure that I pronounced his name right that time and I'm not sure that I'm going to get it right this time but we will have a go. So um, Albert Di Crenzio, thank you very much for your donation, um, massively uh, appreciated, thank you. Um, and then we've got um, Lee Fennel. Uh, and Lee, you've donated before and I'm very grateful uh, for all the support that I get from the channel uh, and Albert, especially um, your donation, uh, a massive, massive thank you. So events are um, aligning and converging and um, as a result, we're going to be doing some celebrating. And when I say we, I mean all of us, who all of us. So. Um, the channel is four years old in November. Believe it or not, I've been on air for four years. Don't know where that's gone. Absolutely incredible. Uh, we started at the start of the pandemic, like a number of modelling channels that sprung up. So um, there's all sorts of channels that I know that sort of started about this time. Um, and so in November, we become four. I sort of estimating that at some point in November we should just about achieve 10,000 subscribers. We're at 9,006 I think currently. Um, 9,006 something. So we're nearly at 9,700. And I roughly get um, in the summer months about somewhere between 180 to 200 subscribers, new subscribers a month. Um, like I say, it's a bit quieter. Um, so I'm reckoning by November we should have either achieved 10,000 or just about be about to. So that's two things converging together. Um, and I really wanted to celebrate that. Now we've celebrated um, subscriber count milestones before and what we've done in the past is said right okay um, you can pick a kit the problem with picking a kit is I'm always in the process of building something can we go right okay we've picked a kit but I'm doing this and I'm already committed to this and this so it gets three or four builds down and if you remember the goat I think we started it five months after the kit was chosen so that's not going to work for me this time um, but we are going to do something a bit different and quite special and we're going to do a series of, of uh, things so what we're going to do is we're going to let you guys the subscribers take over the channel and you're going to take over the channel for 14 days so that's one day for each 1000 subscribers um, and one day for each year the channel's been going. 14 days, two weeks where you guys are going to take over the channel. So what that means is um, you will be choosing the first impressions video that goes out um, on those two weeks. So you'll be choosing two first impressions videos. So a little bit nearer the time I will give you a list of kits and you guys can pick which one I do as the first impression in those weeks. So you'll be making the decisions about what's going out on the channel. Um, the Monday slot also, I'll be giving you some options. So it'll be tool reviews, product reviews, something like that. Uh, whatever I've got sort of in the pipeline and say, right, choose it. So the channel will very much be doing what you guys would like to see or the, or, uh, the, the majority of you. We'll put some live streams in so you guys have an opportunity to talk to me and talk uh, to yourselves. A lot of you sort of know each other now from the comments, from the live chat on a Friday, but also 
the subscriber showcase that um, I do at the end of the year. So you'll have an opportunity to, to interact with the channel. We'll do uh, a live stream on each of the weeks. So uh, that's what will, will, will happen um, for the first part of the week. Now, the Friday slot um, where we do a, um, a build, you're also going to choose that because I'm going to pick out some kits from my, um, from my stash and I'm going to have 14 days to build that kit. Uh, build it, paint it, finish it from opening the box to they're done. 14 days. So I will have to pick wisely and hope that those kits aren't more challenging than I think. Um, so yeah, we will stop everything and for two weeks you'll choose everything that goes out on this channel. It'll be handing it over to you, the subscribers. So I am not going to announce this um, um, until much closer to the time, but you guys, as always, um, the people who are really um, interested in the channel that, that watch Table Talk, you guys get a heads up on this. Uh, I will announce it a little bit later so all my subscribers uh, can take part in that process uh, because it will mean sharing the kits, doing some polls, collecting the things. So a little bit nearer the time um, in uh, September, uh, end of September, early October, we'll start that process of um, handing the channel over to you for two weeks. Who knows what's going to happen? It's going to be chaos, uh, but it's going to be a lot of fun. I think it's going to be a lot of fun and it's going to it's really going to make the channel become yours for just for a couple of weeks and then I'll have it back. Thank you very much. Um, so we'll be doing on the Mondays the videos that you guys want to see on the first impressions, the kits that you want to see reviewed. Um, and I've got a number of kits that we could do. So, so kits that I've got in the stash that I've not recorded yet, kits that I've recorded but haven't gone out yet, we'll offer them all up probably in the table talk video and go this is the list of kits at the end of the video um, and put in the comments which ones you'd want to see i'll then shortlist them and we'll do a little poll and do a second vote and just get that that right down to uh, what we're going to do so you'll be choosing two mondays two wednesdays and then for um 14 days i will do this build and then that build will immediately be shared. And when I do the two live streams, I'll probably be talking and building as well. So you will end up picking the build. So you'll have total control of everything that's happening for those two weeks. So I think that'll be a lot of fun. And it's a, uh, a way of saying thank you for all the support. This channel is very much um, about you guys. Um, I do the stuff that is popular that people like seem to like to watch um, and over the last four years I've sort of got into my groove my style I'm really relaxed about doing this now and I'm not standing rigid talking like a robot like I was at the start um, and some people I notice some channels never really uh, shake that off and they're very rigid and, and what have you and I'm as you can see I'm quite relaxed into it now but that's not all we're gonna do um, so I'm also going to do a giveaway um, and the giveaway is going to um, be actually three giveaways. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do um, two UK giveaways and one rest of the world giveaways and that's to do with managing cost. So um, what's going to happen is um, we're going to do a giveaway on each one of the days of the Telford show. So to be involved in getting a free kit um, from me, um, you will have to be at Telford and be a subscriber um, and probably have watched Table Talk to know what's going on. Now I have in my mind a way of picking the winner. So I will have picked the winner before the Telford show. So you've got to know that you're going to Telford. There will be a giveaway on the Saturday and then a giveaway on the Sunday. Um, I'll be selecting a time to do the meet and greet and in that meet and greet spot, 
we will do the giveaway and anyone who's at Telford who's a subscriber will have the opportunity to have won a free kit. So it's worth going to Telford just for that. Um, what I will say is um, that the kits won't be, um, the, the kits will come out of my stash. So I will choose um, three kits out of my stash. The third kit, um, we'll be running a competition in the same way as the Telford competition, but it will only for be people for people who live outside of the UK. Um, and the reason is, there's I have uh, a lot of viewers um, in America, especially, but also in Australia, um, various countries across Europe, even. Uh, African uh, and South African continent as well. So I've got people all over. Um, so yeah, the it, it will be really nice to get all of you um, guys that sometimes miss out um, on, on UK based channels because it is expensive to ship out. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick a, pick a kit, that uh, a nice kit that's, that's not too heavy um, so that we can get that posted out to you. And it'll probably be a kit that is difficult to get outside of the UK. So it's likely to be an Airfix kit and it will be a genuine Airfix tooling. It won't be an Airfix kit that was made by somebody else and it's got an Airfix box on. Um, so it'll be something that Airfix made. Um, so, but I won't be telling you what the kit is um, until after the competition is won and then I'll announce the winner, show the kit and the kit will get posted off. So that's how that will work. Um, and then on the other two um, for Telford, the reason uh, I'm going to give them away at Telford is I've got no uh, delivery costs so I'm taking less out of the channel's budget. It's as simple as that. I know many of you go to Telford, I know not everyone does um, uh, and I sort of battled with it. Um, but I think, I think that's the way to go. Um, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. One on the Saturday, one on the Sunday, two different kits, two different days, um, and you've got a chance to say hello. I can pass you the kit in person, say thank you to all my subscribers that, that are there for, for all the support. Um, and it should be a lot of fun. So one way or another, there's some way you can get involved in the channel in a more close way than you've done before, whether that's getting involved in the giveaway, but also having a say in what we do for, for two weeks. And we'll do that at some point in November. And I don't know whether um, I will we'll do Telford and then that'll kick off the two weeks of the subscriber takeover, or whether we'll do um, a week before, Telford in the middle, week, week after. I think that's less likely because of the doing a build for two weeks. I'm going to want to have those those full weekends. Um, so something like that. So it's likely to be post Telford, back end of November, um, which will then get us into Christmas month where we're doing stuff with the subscribers anyway because we've got the subscriber showcase and we do uh, some, some different little things like the gaff reel and, and bits and pieces like that. So... It should mean the last couple of months of the year should be quite a lot of fun. Now, I was also thinking about possibly launching a group build, uh, a subscriber thank you group build, um, which means that you would possibly choose the group build and I'd have to go along with that. I need to think about that and see, um, see how I would make that work and it will depend on where I am on the pipeline with my other builds because if I'm building the Eagle and the Shan Horse and I take a break for a couple of weeks, that's okay. But if we then do uh, a group build, um, I've got another model to build. Uh, but what I might do is, is say, right, you guys choose the group build for next year and we'll kick it off on the 1st of January and we'll let it run for a longer period of time so that Everyone's got a, an opportunity, even when life throws obstacles at them, uh, to get that done. So I think we did three months uh, last time. Uh, the first group build I ever did was a month. Then we've done three months. We might go six months. You've got six months to do this. And I might let you guys choose the group build. Um, 
So how we're going to do that, I don't know. Uh, but I like the idea of the group build being something you chose. Um, so um, we might do um, a live stream where we talk about it and we, we take some views and decide what's popular and, and do it in a, in a massive forum and see what happens, um, which could be fun. That could be a great laugh. So those are the ideas I've got. I really want to say thank you to you guys because you don't know how much it means to me, um, all the support I get. Um, and what I'd say to you is, um, you know, there's only a small percentage of people watching my videos that are actually subscribers. So, you know, encourage people to subscribe. If you know people that are aware of the channel, watch the channel, you know, get them to subscribe because there's a lot of people that make comments on my videos and then, you know, they've clearly missed something that I put out quite recently because they're asking a question like, you know, where I often get asked, where did you get your desk lamp from? Well, I did a video on it. Um, and, you know, what's that tool you're using? Well, I did a video on it. So, uh, New subscribers may have missed them, and then there's other subscribers, that, uh, other people that are dipping in and out when they see the video presented in front of them by YouTube, but they're not subscribers or they've not hit the notifications bell. So let's get some more subscribers. Let's get to that 10,000K milestone because that's epic for me. It's really, really big. Uh, when I started this, I was sort of like, if I get two or 300 subscribers, um, I, I, I'd be absolutely made up because I was thinking I'd probably be in double figures and and um, yeah it, it's just amazing we've got that and I want to say thank you big style so that's what we're gonna do does that sound fun I think it's gonna be fun right then I think that pretty much covers everything I wanted to talk about this week so uh, lots of stuff uh, to work through next week. So next week's table talk, uh, there may be some stuff on, on our adventures and, and what we've been uh, getting up to. Some, some uh, might have some photographs to share from um, our week. And then we can talk about progress on the tempo um, and the next four kits that I'll be filming for the first impressions. So um, Dom, once again, thank you very much for this. Everyone, thank you very much for subscribing, for watching Table Talk, for supporting the channel. You're all heroes. Have a fantastic week. Enjoy your modelling. That's the most important thing. And I will see you very soon. Bye for now. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so. It's free and that way you won't miss my first impressions, my tool reviews, my product reviews and any of my builds. Um, including wooden model kits as well as plastic. It's all free, and if you'd like to support the channel, you can hit my PayPal link in the text below. Uh, every pound goes straight into the channel uh, to keep the cameras rolling and to do more fun stuff for you to watch.